Hi class. Today we're going to talk about operations on sets. Continuing with this analogy, once you learn to count, you could also start doing operations on numbers. You can add, subtract, multiply, divide, etc. Now that we have a notion of sets, our task today is to um, define ways to combine them. So in particular, is there an analog of addition for sets, etc.? For what follows, it'll actually be really, really helpful for us to have like a good visual grounding for the things that we're talking about. So we're going to be using Venn diagrams to represent these various operations on our sets. First, let's introduce the union. So you've got two sets, A and B, uh, with these elements, one, two, three, right? Um, definition, the union of A and B is the set denoted A with a U in between them, A and B with a U in between them. This is defined to be X such that X is in A or X is in B. So for example, in this case, we want either X to be in A or X to be in B. Here, A union B is going to be the set one, two, and three. And one other thing I'd want to note is to note that any set unioned with the empty set is the set that you started with. All right, next let's talk about the intersection. So say we've got the same two sets A and B. Definition, the intersection of A and B is, well, here's the notation, an upside down U, let's say, between A and B. This is defined to be all objects such that X is in A, that object's in A, and that object is in B. So in this particular case, we want the object that we're concerned with to be in A and B, so that will cover this section of our Venn diagram. So A intersect B here is going to be two. And again, we'll note here that A intersect the empty set. Any set intersect the empty set is going to be the empty set. In fact, any set intersect the sub a subset is going to be the subset. Before we move on to other things, there's a few things I'd want to note specifically about the intersection. So definition, uh, sets A and B are called disjoint if the intersection of A and B is the empty set. So one simple example of this is if your sets A and B have nothing in common. And you can generalize this to when you have more than two sets. So sets A1, A2, dot, 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 A, N, say you have N sets, they're called pairwise disjoint if the intersection of any two is going to be the empty set whenever they're different. There are many reasons why we might be interested in um, when sets are disjoint. I'm going to note one of them for you. So note, if A and B are disjoint, then A, well, let's talk about what this means. So if this is A and say this is B, we can visualize the cardinality of their union. So in this case, the union is going to have cardinality. Well, you're going to take all the things in A and you're going to take all the things in B and they're different. So um, the cardinality of the union is the sum of the cardinality of the parts. But if A and B are not disjoint, then let's talk about this situation. If we were to take all the things in A and then consider all the things in B, notice that we'll be double counting the intersection. So in this case, A union B, the cardinality of A union B is going to be cardinality of A plus the cardinality of B minus the cardinality of the thing that was double counted, which is the intersection of A and B. Before we move on to other things, so we've just covered the union and the intersection. So before we move on to other things, um, here are some observations worth noting. So. One thing is that we've got commutativity. Say we wanted to union A, union B, or we wanted to union B with A. Those will be precisely the same thing. And it's the same thing with the intersection. 
A intersect B is the same thing as B intersect A. This is called commutativity. Um, there's also a notion of associativity. So say we've got A union B union C, or we union A and B first, and then we union it with C. These are all going to be the same thing. Similarly, A intersect B intersect C is going to be equal to A intersect B intersect C. This is called associativity. But it becomes more complicated to see what's going on once we start combining unions and intersections. So let's talk about the set A union, the set B intersects C. And let's look at the set A union B intersect A union C. And let's see what's going on. So in purple, I'm going to put B intersect C. That is going to be here. And in red, I'm going to put A. In purple, I'm going to put A union B. That's here. And in yellow, I'm going to put A union C. So the intersection of these two sets is right here. After all that, we see that these two sets are actually equal to each other. This is a distributive property. We can also explore another distributive property. Let's look at A intersect B union C versus A intersect B union A intersect C. In purple, I'm going to have B union C, and in yellow, I'm going to have A, and so the intersection is so. On the right-hand side in this other set, I'm going to have A union C in purple, A intersect C in purple, I'm going to have A intersect B in yellow, and so the union of these two things is just adding them all up. And so we actually see that these sets are equal to each other. There are other sets to consider, and this we won't explore in so much detail, but you have plenty of practice. So first, let's talk about the set difference. Say we've got our A and B as before with the numbers 1, 2, and 3 spread out like so. A minus B, denoted in these two different ways, is the set that contains the object such that X is in A, but X is not in B. In this case, uh, what's in A, but definitely not in B, right over here. So um, in our example, A, the set difference between A and B is just going to be one. You can also consider the symmetric difference. So here's the notation for it. And it's the objects such that X is in A and X is not in B, or X is not in A and X is in B. Said otherwise, it's all the stuff that's in A but not in B, union all the stuff that's in B but not in A. Uh, in this particular example, uh, that's going to be the stuff in A that's not in B, union the stuff in B that's not in A. So in this example, the symmetric difference is going to be one comma three. More on this later. The last thing that we wanna talk about today is the Cartesian product. If we're maintaining our analogy, this is the analogous operation to multiplication of numbers. So let's say A and B are sets. Definition, the Cartesian product of A and B is denoted with a cross between them. It's defined to be the set, which is a collection of pairs, such that A is in A and B is in B. For example, uh, this is the set of all ordered pairs, that is, two element lists, formed by pairing an element of A with an element of B in all possible ways. But let's do a quick example. So if A is the set 1, 2, and B is the set A, B, C, then A cross B is going to be the set 1A, 1B, 1C, 2A, 
to be 2C. All the possible ways of combining something in the set A with something in the set B. Here's a question that I'm going to leave you with. Question, if A and B are sets, do you have a sense of what the cardinality of A cross B is going to be? Think on this. Talk to you later.